again. Sure. <laughs> well, welcome everyone to our Chaos Grimoire Lab working group meeting on October 8, 2019. You're now recording. All right. Well, I will start then by saying by saying <laughs> that I followed uh, Georg's blog post on installing Grimoire Lab, and I had zero problems at all. I mean, it honestly took 10 minutes, and I literally mean it that I kind of did it in between things. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think my, you know my next question when I finished that was now what what can I do with it, right? Yeah. So now that I have it installed, because um, I saw that data, now what? What's my next thing to do? So I thought it was great. Yeah, and I do want to give credit to, um, I think Lewis built the analytics demo. So thank you for putting it together. And it's a really nice tool. I was just the one who wrote the blog post. Thank you. Yeah, well done. It was very simple. The Docker deployment was really easy. I didn't think there was anything like weird installation wise that I had to do. You know what I mean? And even if you have to install, install Docker from scratch, that's easy all by itself. So I didn't think anything was challenging. Let's see if we make these 10 minutes, five minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> in a few months. And maybe, I mean, honestly, like I said, when I was doing it in between things, that was like I was answering emails while <laughs> things were being installed and all that kind of stuff. So it was really well done. OK, so this is really good to know. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, we have a newcomer to the community, at least to the Grimoire Lab call. So welcome. Uh, I think, uh, Valerio, you can introduce uh, well, both of you, maybe, and the work you've been doing together. Uh, sure. So in the call, we have uh, Nisht, that was the, I mean, he's the student that worked on uh, on the integration between Graal and Grimoire Lab. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the idea is uh, that I'm going to show you like uh, the, some, I mean, the dashboard we have uh, uh, about uh, Graal data. And then uh, uh, maybe we try also a live uh, uh, demo to see how, how we can uh, execute Grimoire Lab with Graal. And Nish, feel free to interrupt me when, I mean, if you want to add the, uh, uh, things. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. Oh, maybe uh, Valeria. Sorry, maybe Nish. You do you mind introducing yourself? So. Um. Uh, yeah. So, uh, hi, I'm Nishchit. Uh, I'm a student uh, at uh, university. I'm doing my majors in computer science, and I'm currently in my senior year, and just uh, planning for my masters next year. And it was really fun to work with Kia this year because uh, everyone is so supportive and the community is so uh, supportive of the work and they are really aware of what we're doing here. So thanks everyone for having me right now. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being here. Yeah, so, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for your work mm. and contributions. Yeah. So just a small, uh, small tips for, for today for the agenda uh, before Valeria starts. So the, the plan for today is to have this introduction to, to Graal by Nish and, and Valerio and how they were integrating this with Remote Lab and introduction to some panels. Um, the idea for this would be to have like, uh, so we have 50 minutes, maybe like 20 minutes, kind of this. Then the next part of the plan is to finish the panel we have for the hours and days of the week. But it's, it's kind of in between of having something uh, usable. So I would like, for instance, to see small help, all of these things. If we have time, we can go for the import and export thing. And if not, then, then we can go for the areas of documentation, the discussion that Matt and Enrique had at the very beginning. So I guess this, this can be the agenda for today. If you have any other ideas or comments, so, yeah. This is good. OK. So then, uh, Valerio, please go ahead. Uh, OK. 
I'm going to share my screen. And when you do this, could you give an overview of what Growl is? Because there's yes, so sure. many components. Yes, I... so uh, uh, basically uh, Growl uh, has been conceived to complete uh, Perceval. So Perceval is basically taking data from many data sources uh, used in software development. So we have uh, information about uh, Git, uh, issues on GitHub, and so on. Uh, Graal uh, tries to do the same, but uh, at code level. Uh, so um, the approach of Graal is available here. Okay, I shared the, the link to the research paper. But in a nutshell, what it does is uh, it intercepts the data produced by the Git backend, and then it plugs um, existing uh, source code analysis tool. So we have uh, uh, the same concept uh, we have in Perceval. So we have uh, the client, the backend, and the command line. And the output is basically the same of uh, Perceval. Um, so basically, uh, now we have already some backends. So I, I can show you. Uh, you see this? OK. Uh, so here we have several backends. The one about uh, code complexity, code dependencies, information about uh, uh, the languages used in the code, uh, licenses, uh, qualities, and vulnerabilities. So uh, some of them are, related, are linked uh, based just on Python code. But for instance, COCOM and uh, Colic, that are the one about uh, complexity and the license, are just are, uh, agnostic. So they can work with uh, plenty of languages. And uh, these backends these were the focus on the integration between Grimoire Lab and, uh, and Graal. Uh, so, uh, that's helpful. Thank you. OK, great. Um, just one more question. So I saw it was using Elasticsearch. Is, it the, is the information from Grawl star, stored in the same space that the information from Percival is stored? Uh, yes, basically, uh, the data is stored in different indexes. Okay. Uh, but uh, basically, it's uh, is really similar to the, to the information we can have for uh, Git commits. Uh, the only difference is that uh, we have like uh, a section, an attribute that is called uh, analysis. And there we can find like uh, the data returned by the source, uh, the source uh, analysis. Uh, okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, okay. But Valerio, so, one question. Yes. In the code you were showing, showing to us, uh, uh, there are kind of six backends, right? Those are backends. Uh, yes. So, so I guess uh, you you uh, you call uh, one per uh, two per tool. I mean those integrates tools that we are that Graal is using with the data, uh, which is retrieved by Percival, right? Uh, yes. Generally, we call just one tool. But for instance, for Cocom, we we rely uh, on two tools, Clock okay. and the Lizard that is our Python library, because okay. actually Graal. Uh, to integrate the, these uh, source code analysis tools, uh, there are, I mean, two options. One is uh, calling them from a common line, from terminal, so then we pass the, the output of the, of the tool. Otherwise, if they are Python interfaces, we can just, uh, I mean, if they are Python tools, we can just use their interfaces. So this is the case of Lizard uh, that is, uh, uh, anyway, all, all these tools are, uh, are available in um, in the uh, Graal readme. So, okay. So if we go here, the readme. So read the fuck. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, so here we have clock, uh, uh, no more scan code. So yes, so here we have Lizard, for instance. So Lizard is a is a tool, pretty popular, and here we have like uh, what it does. I mean. It, since we, I mean, one of the ideas of Graal was uh, we are not going to reinvent the wheel, so we try to leverage on open source tools. And so actually, I mean, I don't know exactly how leads are works under the hood, but I'm just interested in the, in the, out, in the output. So this was basically the, the main idea. So if we go to the dashboard. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So if you go to, yes. 
So this, uh, you can access this instance if you want to inspect the data. So I'm going to share the link of the instance here. So basically, uh, NIST uh, and HI worked uh, on this uh, together to develop uh, the integration and, uh, and work on the panels. Uh, also, Jesus was involved there. Uh, so if we click on code complexity, um, so here we uploaded the, the data about the Grimoire Lab uh, repositories. So this is the dashboard about code complexity. Here we have like uh, the selector, so we can focus on uh, a given repository, a project, uh, a module, a file path, and uh, below we can see uh, the evolution of uh, the number of functions and for instance, code complexity. Uh, and then also the lines of code that comments. All this data comes from uh, Clock and Lizard. So then at the end, we have like um, a table uh, which summarizes like uh, the results for, uh, for repositories and for files. So imagine that we want to focus on, uh, for instance, Elk. Okay, so all the visualizations uh, change and we can see that, I mean, the, for instance, the number of, uh, I mean, the code complexity uh, from the very beginning until uh, today has gone like, uh, has increased. So I have, I have a question. Yes. So I was going through the selector and on project, I'm able to select say Augur. Yes. But then as a repository, I can uh, select something out of, I can select say Grimoire Lab. Sorry. The project selector is not working. Seems so. Okay. So, okay. So would, in, would that normally uh, localize me to the repositories of that project? Uh, well, the project information comes from the project JSON. So uh, it's possible that we just focus on, I mean, now I don't remember exactly, but in, in, in theory, uh, uh, if you have the, um, if you know how the project JSON is, uh, is done that is basically something similar to this one. So probably we have a section agur but was empty, I guess. I mean because uh, this part is basically comes already from uh, Grimoire Lab. So so would the maybe... logic be if I select if you select repository at this point? I understand project's not working. No keep agur yes. there. So if we select uh, yes, if you select uh, agur okay. and you apply the changes. So we have okay. information about uh, 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 Ogur. So are you going to get rid of project or are you going to keep it? And if you keep it, what would be the relationship to repository? Maybe that's my uh, question. Okay, well, in, in theory, um, since the repositories are included in project, so if you select Ogur and then uh, you select, uh, for instance, let's suppose you select Grimoire Lab, it should work maybe. Okay, no, it's not really working. <laughs> Okay. Uh, in theory, I mean, the, the, there should be like, if you select project, you should be able to have all the repositories under that project. That would make sense to me. Okay. And then, okay, with the repository, you can go like... Uh, so it kind of filters the, down just the repos of that particular project. Okay. So okay. as you can see, Graal is still like, uh, I mean, we did the integration, so the work done by Nish was, uh, was great. Yep. Uh, but of course, I mean, we still need to... Uh, play with Graal and see if we have like problems. Totally like, not a criticism. I just, I was curious <laughs> as yeah, to how yeah, these are working. Uh, yes, yeah, I mean, anyway, thank you for uh, the, the feedback. Yep. Uh, so if we go to the code license, uh, so here we can, uh, we have uh, basically the similar, similar dashboard and mm. we have like information about uh, uh, licensed files and copyrighted. So in this case, um, the, the backend uh, uh, about licenses is relying on two tools. So basically we can use Nomos mm -hmm. or scan code. Uh, so Nomos uh, gives you just uh, uh, licensed files. If we run scan code, we get uh, copyright and license files. Mm -hmm. So uh, since this data has been built just with Nomos, the information about copyrighted files is always empty. Mm -hmm. And in this case, for instance, we, we can see that uh, we have all uh, 
files licensed. So the total files is basic is the same of the licensed files, and we don't have copyright files. So this is something that more or less answer uh, the question of Luis. Uh, so in some cases we mix tools. In other cases we we have like uh, different categories, and uh, the main reason for this backend uh, of having like two categories, so to use uh, different tools is that Nomos is super fast, but is less precise. And scan code is super slow, but is uh, really accurate. So this is uh, a decision that uh, if we want to uh, deploy this for clients, for customers, something that we have to take into account because uh, analysis can take uh, 20 minutes or uh, maybe four hours. Mm -hmm. So a couple of questions here. Yes. Um, how, so would it be a kind of behind the scenes configuration to pick between Nomos and scan code? Uh, yes, now we are going okay. to check uh, the, the, the configuration file that is, is, okay. uh, is basically the setup CFG and project JSON uh, of DreamWare Lab. Okay, so uh, does the Docker deployment come with scan code and nomos because i know nomos is a little bit funny because it's tied with phosology and scan yes. code i know is really easy to deploy at the command line so how would you distribute those two so for for nomos so in uh, Graal, what what it does it accepts an, an executable path when we are relying on these tools so in, in theory you have to you should have uh, one of these two tools here in your machine and you just point uh, the executable path Okay. So uh, I can. Yeah, scan code is really easy to deploy locally. I know that. Yes. And, uh, and uh, so we did some evaluation with scan code. And the point is uh, for us, it's not really fast because uh, we are, uh, for, for each commit, we are executing scan code just on the, on the files that have been modified. Okay. So talking with, uh, the, um, with uh, uh, scan code people, uh, so they said that uh, scan code uh, is good when uh, you do multiple analysis in the sense that uh, the first analysis takes time because you have to load the, the, the model in memory, but then yep. the other analysis are fast, but we are using scan code in, um, I mean, we can just call it from command line. So, uh, I mean, we have basically, I mean, for us, it's really slow because each time we, we call scan code, he has to load everything to into yep. memory. So, um, okay. So I have two more questions. One, so whether it's scan code or Nomos, are you, you're, I, it sounded like you provide the option to basically store the results on a file by file basis based on some like hash lookup on a file that I can get the results. Cause like mm -hmm. if, if I have a package, right, that has a hundred files that comprise that package, scanning it the first time obviously will take a little bit longer. But if Daniel submits a package and we have 50% overlap on the files, it would make a ton of sense to not, not rescan those files as identified through some marker that this file already contains a license. Uh, yes, I mean, this is, I mean, in, in Graal, what we do is basically for, for each commit, we do a checkout. Okay. And then we, we run the, the, the scan code, I mean, the tool, on the files that uh, were modified uh, by the um, by the commit, uh, so we are not like caching the results. We are not like doing uh, uh, incremental uh, or evaluation or or uh, checking the differences between two checkouts. But if you're only do, are you only doing it like on a project, like project version one versus project version two? Because there is a lot of potential to have overlap of files between projects that aren't just being versioned. So if Daniel is project A and I'm project Z, there's a good chance that he and I are sharing files that yeah. may have results that I could yeah. use. It's not just his versioning through those or my versioning through those, but it's that there's overlap between the files. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, but actually, this kind of uh, uh, support, I mean, is is not provided by Graal. I mean, it's a good idea, uh, but we are uh, we are not basically caching the results or uh, comparing uh, across. Uh, yes, across projects. Okay. But I mean, in, 
I mean, could be a, a good idea to think about. Um, yeah, basically what we're doing is really a repository level. So as, as, as uh, the backend uh, of Percival, so we trade over the commits and for each commit, we execute the analysis. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and then one other question. So do you, do you ever do, could it, would it be possible to do a cross compare between Nomos and scan code? such that a particular file is given a license by scan code and it's given the same license. It's identified as the same license by Nomos. So we can uh, provide a level of assurance or if they find two different licenses, <laughs> we probably say that I don't know what to do with this. So uh, I mean, we are, with Niche, we are working on this kind of evaluation to compare okay. uh, Nomos and scan code. So okay. the idea is to run Graal with uh, an analyzer and Graal with the other analyzer and, and check which is, is the which project is more accurate. But there is a, um, uh, uh, I think a master thesis uh, that I, I can share later. Uh, that basically is, is evaluating uh, all different um, uh, um, license analyzers and see who is better. So okay. which one is better? Uh, but I mean I can share later the uh, this uh, the PDF version of this uh, master thesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's not always necessary to have the better tool. Sometimes it's just as a way to identify where to look deeper. I know we had this conversation on the to-do group uh, Slack channel a week or two ago, um, where there was a paper that compared different license scanners. And depending on the use case, sometimes you want, or sometimes you prefer more false positives because it gives you more ideas of where to look and what to anal analyze, even though it's less yeah. accurate. I mean, I think it's, I mean, it's, um, it's uh, I mean, I totally agree with you. Uh, it's a good reflection. Uh, the point is, uh, as you said, depends on the use case. So for instance, uh, if you are uh, evaluating a, a tool and you, you have to be really sure that uh, all files are licensed uh, for a given, uh, I mean, with res under a given license, and it's better to wait maybe two days to have the analysis complete. But in other cases, for instance, Nomos is, is perfect. So this is also for uh, people that at some point would like to use Graal. So Nomos uh, is faster, but less precise. Scan code is uh, more precise, but you lose on, uh, uh, on performance. So I mean, it, it's a nice uh, 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 thought. So depending on the requirements, you can decide which tool you can run and what is good for your case. Uh, OK. So. Uh, I can show you like the the setup uh, files, or, or you have other questions. I'm good. Okay. Okay. So this is a classical uh, setup uh, CFG. So the one that uh, includes all information to access. Uh, Elasticsearch and, uh, uh, and sorting out, for instance. And here, we can see that we have uh, COCOM and uh, Colic. So as you can see uh, in the Colic uh, uh, section, so we have, uh, we pass the, uh, the path of the executable. And then, uh, so we are defining basically the row index, the reached index, uh, the category, so as you can see, if we compare with, uh, uh, so yeah, in this case, we, I mean, we had just one, one colleague, uh, one, one setup for the colleague, the code uh, license uh, uh, backend, but the category, okay, is Nomos. Then we have like a study. This is needed to have like uh, aggregated data at repository level. So yeah, to, be clear. So if we go, for instance, in code complexity. 
So this information, the one that you see in uh, the evolution called complexion function and evolution of uh, lines of code comments, this is uh, derived from a, from a study that is uh, uh, basically this one. And uh, to give more details, uh, a study in Grimoire Lab generally takes as input an enriched index and produces another index. Uh, so in this case, uh, the study is calculating uh, uh, the information in the dashboard every six months. So then if we go to the project uh, JSON, we have just to... Uh, Valerio. Yes? Can you repeat what, what you said about the months? What? Can you repeat what you said about the months, the six months? What, what's that? Uh, yes. So um, here the problem is... Uh, uh, what in the Richard index we have the data about uh, uh, every file. Uh -huh. So the idea of the study is uh, to aggregate the information of all the files for a given repository and show the, this uh, aggregated information every uh, time span. So in this case, the time span uh, uh, by default is uh, is three, but we can set it to six. So it means that uh, every uh, uh, three months. So we, so we are not computing for every single commit, right? No, because the, uh, there, I mean, there we, we had like a technical uh, uh, difficulties because the same file can be modified uh, many times. So initially, we thought uh, that was possible uh, to aggregate uh, all information uh, for a given, uh, until a given commit. So imagine that you have three commits, First commit uh, modifies two files. The second one modifies three files. Uh, and the third one modifies like uh, all that files. So the idea was to aggregate all this information using Kibana without uh, relying on an index. We saw that was not possible. So we decided to uh, make like queries, uh, incremental queries, and uh, aggregate this data by an intervals that, is, uh, that are uh, like uh, tunable for the user. Is that clear? Okay, so but uh, then you are getting a snapshot of the code and executing the the, the, the analysis, kind of or. Well, uh, sorry, I didn't understand the question. So, so what uh, what you're doing with with these six months is you, you get the data every six months. You kind of uh, aggregate the the. Health. I mean, how do you get the, the code? The code you have to analyze. Okay, you. So Graal uh, takes the data from, uh, from a repository. And this is, uh, uh, it calculates information for every commit. So for the files modified in every commit. So this information is stored in the, in the row index. Then in the Richard part, okay. we uh, basically flat the information for, uh, uh, for each uh, file we have uh, in the row index and then at, in the study, what we do is uh, we, we collect all the enriched documents that are basically files for, uh, based on a time interval. So for instance, if you have five commits uh, that uh, have been committed over like uh, three months or uh, six months, and your interval uh, uh, that you set, uh, the interval months is two. So basically we are going to calculate the information from uh, month zero to two, from two to four, and four to, to six. And the commits that, uh, I mean, the, the files that have been modified in that interval are used to aggregate information at repository level. Okay, now I get it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the project JSON, and as you can see, it's basically uh, as uh, any project JSON we have in. Uh, uh, in Grimoire Lab. So we have just to define a, a, a name here. This name has to have a, a correspondence with uh, the backend. And then what we need to do in the setup uh, CFG, we have to uh, enable uh, the, the panels. I mean, if we are focusing on code license, we put code license to true. Code complexity, we put, uh, we set uh, the flag to true. So in this way, more uh, Grimoire Lab will know to up, uh, that he has to upload the, the corresponding panels. 
So uh, to finish the uh, the tutorial, we can try to execute this uh, uh, live and see if well, I mean the result. So uh, so here we have uh, uh, this is the localhost. So I, I'm going to launch the the project JSON uh, and set up CFG you saw, uh, and then. Uh, uh, we see if we can get some data. So I have a question okay. about the setup CFG here. Yes. In the section panels, you have, you activate the panels, but I know we have more panels than just code license and code complexity. Why, is, why are these special? What's different here? Uh, so uh, this is uh, basically uh, an implementation decision because most of the panels are loaded uh, based on on the name uh, on the backup name. So basically, in Sigils, we have a, a panel or a dashboard with this name. So then Grimoire Lab, what it does is checking, uh, uh, I mean, looking for a name and uploading the corresponding panel. In uh, for Colic, for Colic and Cocom was a bit difficult because uh, uh, we have to, apply, to update not just uh, the rich index, so the, I mean the, the dashboard, but also basically information about uh, uh, the, the study index. So for this reason, we decided to, uh, to upload, uh, I mean, to, to trigger the upload using uh, a flag. The, I mean, this behavior you see there uh, is also used for GitLab because for GitLab we have, for the same data source, we have two types of panels. One is uh, for issues and one is for merge requests. So since uh, the approach of uh, uploading panels uh, based on the backend name was not uh, precise because in some cases maybe you want just uh, issues and in other case you want both. So in GitLab we use the uh, this way of uh, uploading panels. And we repeat the same with, uh, with Grab. So having two different ways to activate uploading panels um, seems inconsistent. That's just my observation. That's true, but uh, this is a, like an, an, a discussion yep. that, uh, that was there even before uh, uh, Graal. So, uh, I mean, the idea would be uh, probably to uh, clearly uh, list the panels you want to analyze. So in the setup uh, CFG, maybe for each panel you want to analyze, you should have a flag true or, for, or false. Because in some cases, uh, you want, the, for instance, the, the data of a data source like GitHub, so pull request, but maybe you are not interested in, uh, in uploading the default panel Grimoire Lab is, is giving. Yeah. So... Uh Yes. Yeah. Let's have this conversation another time because the focus was on Graal. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, okay. So uh, we are going to launch Sir uh, Mordred uh, uh, with this uh, setup and this project JSON. Uh, so if we do like this. Okay. This is. Okay, in the meanwhile, uh, while it's loading, uh, I share also the, the blog of Nish, and actually you can uh, ping uh, him if you have like uh, specific questions and uh, about, I mean, the technical details of implementing on the integration. Uh, but basically the, the link I shared is like the, the final report. So there you have like an, an overview what has been done, the difficulties we found, and uh, at the end we have also a video. So, yes, a video that basically uh, showcases uh, the, um, the, the full chain. Okay, so I'll, let's go back here. So, uh, here we can see that uh, in theory, the, the collection for Keith, Coco, and Colic is done. So, uh, we have executed the, uh, the studies, 
So if we go to the dashboard now, Uh, so this is localhost. If we refresh, we should have some data. Okay, so this is good. It's working. And then, so if we go to the dashboard, so here on top we can see that we have the tags. So in this case, we are analyzing just one project. Uh, okay, so this is what toolkit is pretty small as repository. And we can see that uh, I mean, we have the basically the dashboard uh, uh, full, and I forgot to mention this. That was one of the last things that was added. We have an help uh, uh, text, uh, help, I mean, a visualization with the details of what the dashboard is doing, and the same for code license. That in this case is based on the normal uh, results. So, Okay, and this basically uh, ends the presentation of uh, the introduction to Gravit. I don't know if you have uh, some questions. I don't, this was very helpful, thank you. Great, thanks. Hmm. I, I do have a question, uh, and the question is, um, so you were presenting this in some incubator thing for uh, Grimoire Lab. Do you think we can have this in chaos at some point? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I guess it's a good idea to, to showcase uh, this feature uh, to the chaos community, at least at first. I mean, because maybe uh, we can have like some uh, refinement of the dashboards or change like uh, I mean, maybe copyright information and license information should go into different dashboards. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, it, I mean, it could be nice to have like uh, an internal feedback. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, perhaps what we can do is once we have the data, uh, as in the indexes and so on, we can start some, I know, brainstorming or or feedback retrieval in the sense of, hey, I would like to see this information related to source code analysis or license information. So then we can produce different dashboards or we can, well, there are people that are now in the, in the call that have access to the dashboard. So they can produce new things for whatever they think it's important. So. Yeah, I mean, this would be great because in addition, I mean, Nish is really interested in, uh, in keeping uh, contributing to Grimoire Lab. Mm. So I don't know, Nish, if you want to comment something on, on this. But uh, I mean, if we can have something like this and uh, Nish can be also able to to be involved, it would be great because I really believe that he did a great job uh, um, to, I mean, yeah, for uh, I mean this uh, Google Summer of Code period, and the results are, are pretty good. I mean, it's, it's good. still we cannot like uh, sell it to uh, I mean to clients, but I mean everything is working. Okay, we have maybe some small bugs. So, uh, any addition, Nisha? Also, uh, nice ideas to share. Okay, so this is a really good presentation. Thank you very much. Um, in terms of the agenda, so we are supposed to work now on so, on the dashboard, but it's only like uh, fifteen minutes left. So then people will start entering into the into the meeting like in ten minutes. So maybe Matt and Manrique, you can start with the uh, with the last part of the agenda, and then we leave the dashboard uh, creation for the next meeting. Sounds Before good. we move on, there was a question in the chat by Armstrong. Oh, yeah. Armstrong, do you want to address your question now? Yes, George. Hi. No, I was just asking in view of uh, when he was explaining the list of modified files. So if we could know the exact commit that modify the files, that would be very useful. Uh, so I don't so I, I sorry, I, I didn't read the the, the, the question. Uh, so uh, yeah, in theory, it's possible. So I guess if we check the Richard index, so for instance, for uh, this, because I think in the Richard index, we have this information, uh, uh, I mean, the, the commit uh, uh, information. So 
Okay. So, uh, okay. I I'm think gonna... we do have. Uh, I think we do have a field, uh, Kamit Shah. So, if we add that field in the dashboard, uh, then we can check out and maybe uh, have that. Yeah, because at this point, if we could uh, do a div just to see the modification that was done, then we can know if a particular commit is bug inducing or not. And that would be a, a very good way of you know, knowing what either we want to predict the, if a commit is harmful or not, or in, in, in introduce the web. Uh. Yes, I mean, this is a nice uh, idea. We have this information in, uh, in the Richard Index, as you can see here. So where the commit uh, SHA. So for instance, this could be a, a nice improvement for uh, the dashboard because, I mean, we want to answer a specific question. Mm -hmm. So th thank you for uh, the feedback. Thank okay. you. Okay, no more comments for Matt and uh, Mandrake, fight. Mine is, it's not, it doesn't have to be like a long discussion. It's mostly just if there are particular things, Manrique, where you'd like me or other community members to really engage, is, like is there a particular documentation that is kind of weak at the moment? You know, or, I, don't know I didn't mean to say weak, but <laughs> could use some some additional set of eyes. Is there somewhere? I think that the, regarding first of all the, the very first thing is about the documentation itself is it's not only about it's weak or not, it's basically if it's useful. Um, our nice. our idea is when we started when this tutorial was uh, created, it's we started even from scratch from the beginning of the project, so it's keep flowing and say like a crazy thing around the project. So each new feature was added, basically it was a new page in the tutorial. So really it ends without a main storyline or, or whatever. So mm -hmm. that, that could create a lot of mess when people face the tutorial itself. And I think the tutorial is the first thing that probably people uh, see about the project. What so, is the, what's the link to the tutorial? Did you provide that? Was that in your email? I don't think so. Let me check. I very completely fair. Uh, uh, I don't know exactly where. Because I'm happy yeah. to take a look at it. I don't remember it. which link I submitted in the in the email. I don't remember exactly, but I can paste it. Several. So I pasted the tutorial here in the. And it's linked from the Chaos uh, Vimor Lab website. So basically, people can't go there because it says prominently in the header of the website, this is the docs. These are the docs. So this all is going to be going there if they go to the website. That's one thing, but it's different. If you go to the Grimoire Lab uh, repository, for example, and the readme in the repository is different from the tutorial itself. So people can get lost. And the other thing is since Grimoire Lab is is composed by, the, by a bunch of components, as we have been explaining at the beginning about the architecture, you can get lost because you can, then someone is talking about Perceval, then go to the readme in Perceval, and then there's no mention in Perceval readme about, okay, this is part of this bigger tutorial or this bigger documentation. It's only about Perceval, so you can get the feeling that you only need to read that readme, and sometimes that readme is not complete enough. Okay. So the first part about how to, to start thinking about this is first of all make sure or we would like from our perspective of participant of the community make sure that the things we are contributing to the community i mean these components are well documented each one of them so first of all you understand which what that, that what those components do by mm -hmm. itself and then you understand okay this component is part of the bigger uh, platform that can do other things and then you can have better and this is the thing that we need to improve is the tutorial itself okay 
And the first, very first step of any tutorial should be how I start playing with this thing. Mm, thanks to to Luis, uh, Docker Compose idea of instead of having a single Docker team that is hidden in one page of the tutorial, is let's start to having a very simple project. Okay, how to we can start playing with this? And I think this is the very first uh, example of community starting to play with the thing and providing feedback. By like Jumat or Ruth that has been doing the IRC channel playing with the thing and now it has been able she has been able to set up three more labs to track uh, Slack, GitHub and now it's working on this course. So basically it's from zero. I don't know any clue about this thing how to make it work, so to make it work. And our aim is instead of having that done in days or ten minutes for the single staff is just to have it in minutes. And this is where I think the community can start to look at it. It's like, okay, we have this Docker Compose idea with these three steps to start working. Is this useful or not? How do you improve it? That's one thing. And then um, when as the thing I probably I link it in the in the email was about the other thing that we have seen from our experience in the workshops is people have issues setting up this in their lab. Don't ask me why. I don't know why, but probably first of all is because each one has a different Docker installation. One has is using Linux, the other one is using Windows, the other one is using Mac. We are more comfortable with Linux. So when someone asks about this, as we now because of Windows, it's like okay, how Docker works in Windows? Is the same thing? Do you have a line, command line? Does it work the same way? So we have started to play on the cloud, so because people is used to okay, I have a Google Cloud Platform environment, or I have an Amazon team. So if you can work in my laptop, it should work in the cloud. So there are tools to automate that thing. And that's the thing I've been working lately. It's a, an example, and again, thanks to Luis again, is because we are using DigitalOcean for, for deploying uh, demos and stuff like that. Is I started playing with tools like Terraform on Ansible to automate the deployment with uh, just a single script in, 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 in DigitalOcean. The thing I have read is if you are using Terraform for deploying or setting up machinery in DigitalOcean, you can do the same thing or very similar thing for digital, I mean, for Amazon, Google Cloud, Azure, or whatever. And that, this is again opens the opportunity to the community that, oh, I have an Azure thing and I can test if this Terraform uh, recipe and this Ansible recipe can work in my, in my cloud environment. So basically, we have not only the app easy way to deploy this in your laptop, but you can deploy in any cloud infrastructure you have out there. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that's for the Grimoire Lab as a platform itself. But there are many other way, areas that people can start contributing. Like the last email I saw about code, code.gov, you, know, you can build different things using Grimoire Lab technologies, and it could be another opportunity for community to build something different from there. I, I don't know if you have a answer your question or create a lot of more <laughs> no i i mean you raise a lot of so you raise a lot of interesting things because while you were talking i was also looking at the tutorial that you sent and so i'll start going through this basically based on it's going to be based on the deployment that um, i just did from the blog post that Georg put together and so I'll, I mean, it, it, I'm guessing that this tutorial is somewhat linear in the sense that I have installed Grimoire Lab. I now have a choice or, and or both, Percival and Grawl, depending on the type of data that I would like. I'm just going to try both and then producing dashboards off of those data. And that's, that's fundamentally what I'm going to do here. So. I think one of the nice things with Georg's blog post is it was extremely linear. I could follow it like in a very, very linear path. And so I'm going to try that with the tutorials that you have. So just FYI. And then I can make comments based on that. I think the tutorial is, is nice once you understand or you have this is running. I mean, because then it's, each piece is very detailed explain and then you can start know more about internal. The thing I 
field that could be blocking people for going further with the tutorial is if you go from scratch from zero. So I want to talk with to you stream or lab and go to the tutorial. Basically the first thing related with having the whole platform installed at this docker, whatever, is in the seven chapters of the tutorial itself. Basically you need it's like my perception is like more teaching people, okay, you need to understand how the whole universe works to make it running. So you understand gravity, you understand everything, and then you turn on the machine of your car and the car runs. Okay, I, I don't need to understand how motors work the first day I, run, I drive them. It's useful if it breaks. But <laughs> so I mean, the way, yeah, I think that is challenging sometimes. Um, so I mean, the way I'm kind of starting to see it, at least in my own mind, is you know I, I deploy Grimoire Lab, which is kind of like the core engine to me. Again, maybe my metaphors are wrong. And then there are different pieces of data that I can collect, which is through Percival and Grawl. And then I can produce dashboards to, to visualize that data. And I understand that there's components with Sorting Hat when I'm doing identities, but I'm not even going there quite yet. So the first thing is kind of get the core to run, understand that there's two different, I know it's not data sources, but two different, um, data retrieval tools. One is Percival and one is Grawl. And then understand that I can produce dashboards. I, tell me if I'm wrong, but that's the way I'm understanding yeah, it. I, I, think, I mean, I guess that is not really like this, the, the main objective of the tutorial, because we, I mean, the tutorial is leveraging on each component. So the idea is that you install Percival and you can just play with Percival or with Grawl. So actually, if you go to the tutorial, you will see that you can uh, install a vir virtual environment and start getting uh, the data just from Percival. Then in the next step, the idea is to use Elk to get, uh, I mean, to get this data in Elasticsearch. Then the next step, you get this data in the dashboard. And then, as Marike said, uh, after hours, you get a Docker Compose and a Setup CFG to get everything uh, there. So basically, uh, the work of um, Georg is great, uh, and the, but the idea there is uh, you get already everything and you start playing with the, with the, with the dashboard. Instead, the focus of Jesus was uh, let's go component by con co component and see how can you get uh, everything uh, all together at the very end. So I just think that uh, it's another way of uh, telling uh, how Green War Lab works. I don't know if Marike agree or other people agree with yeah, the no, story. I think that's what the tutorial currently shows. I think we agree on that. And I think we also have come to a, an agreement here from what I'm hearing. It would be nice to have uh, easy, here's how to get to the data quickly and then have all of the details on how to use the component separately on the back end, and you can go and dive deep into them if you really yeah. care about that. But I agree with the new structure, but the current structure of the tutorial is, uh, I okay. mean, it's point by component. So I want I want quick wins as a user. So being able so, to install it in ten minutes was extremely satisfying. I'll be honest with you. And if I could just say, hmm, I would like to point it as an example at another repository and then see that data, that'd be a huge quick win. I'd be like, oh, that's interesting. So I think the quick win, I, I'm not speaking for everybody, but that was extremely satisfying when I did the tutorial or the whatever, the blog post that Georg had sent out. Yeah, I mean, uh, but I agree with uh, all of you. I mean, in the sense, I'm, uh, I'm, I hope, I mean, actually we are working on uh, writing the new tutorial, I mean, the reship it. But I mean, the current tutorial is, uh, is another story. So uh, if you try to understand the tutorial, the current tutorial, so you have to go for many details and then at the very end you will get some data. So I just that this is what uh, is there. I, I get you. Okay, thank you. I'm so gonna stop the recording. Good. And drop off and then come back on. Yep. Or I'll just stay on.